everybody, welcome back to Super Mega Cast. This is episode 67. A bit late this week, we apologize. That's my fault, I was sick. I, I, I came down with some sickness. Stupid. I'm sorry. How dare you be sick? I'm sorry. What, what, did, you, what did you even have? Um... I, ha- I don't I don't know like I had some kind of like you I had, had like fever. the trifecta you had like a fever you had bad ears and a I bad had, nose I had ear infection <laughs> and inflamed sinus well I went to the doctor because my tonsils were hurting like specifically my tonsils and I had strep throat I had a strain of strep called strep B uh, a couple months ago and they gave me um, penicillin to get rid of it and then I think it never went away and then my throat was hurting really bad so I went back to get it checked out and they had to give me that like throat swab where they stick the Long Q-tip in your throat, which mm-hmm. is one of my least favorite things on the entire planet. Or like the wooden stick. Oh, I, I asked them not to. I'm like, could you not <laughs> use the popsicle stick? Because that's what makes me gag more than anything is that popsicle yeah. stick. But, you know, she you know, she, she, she carved around in my throat with it for a little bit. Had a good time. Um, and then she, it's off for lab results right now. Maybe I'll find out today. Uh, but she's Pray also, for Matt. Yeah, guys, pray hashtag, for hashtag l- pray for Matt. Let his lab results come in, okay? Please, please, please pray for me, guys. I need it. And I'm um, sitting here in a widow's gown, preparing, <laughs> preparing Like a little black veil over your face. Yeah. Um, and also, then she's like, you also have an ear infection and incredibly inflamed sinuses. So I was like, oh, cool. So uh, just taking some more medicine. I'm feeling better now. Feeling good enough to record a podcast. So um, if some of you prayed just now, then the prayers might have gone back in time and worked. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, That's a, I mean, because God, there's no time. Yeah, like, time, he, time is like a, a human construct. So he God's exists outside, of out ti- outside of time. He was the matter. He was the extra matter before mm-hmm. the matter and antimatter kind of so assimilated who, who throughout the universe. Me, thank right? you. Hold, hold up, Ryan. I got I got, I got to say something. Mm-hmm. I just want to let you know that MeUndies makes feel good undies your butt will be proud to wear. But Matt, are you sure they'll be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will ever own in your entire god darn life? Yes, and you can check it out yourself at MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Whoa! With tons of styles and patterns to choose from for both men and women, ooh. MeUndies will have to be- What? What? What were you saying? No, I was saying like, ooh. Oh. Yeah. With tons of styles and patterns to choose from for both men and ladies, MeUndies will have the perfect fit for any personality. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Nice. The MeUndies feeling is unmatched because they use a naturally soft fabric that is not one, not two, three times softer than cotton. But Matt, stop, wait, hold on a second. Uh, For a limited time only, check out MeUndies' first ever glow-in-the-dark print. Lights out. (gasps) Oh, it glows in the dark! Eat gasp! Why not update your underwear drawer and glow at the same time? And if underwear just isn't your thing, MeUndies also makes the softest socks in the world that you can put on your doorknob to warn your friends. Or your feet, either yeah, one. Well, yeah, okay. I got a pair of MeUndies in the mail recently. I put them on, and I do have to actually say they are incredibly comfortable, because usually I just get underwear that I buy from like Target, and these things. Mama Mia, I've been wearing them for a week straight, folks. They're wonderful. They got that fresh smell. They always have that good old me smell. They always smell good. That's the thing. Like, I have not showered in a week or taken these off, and they still smell good. That's awesome, Matthew Watson. You're welcome. To get 20% off the best and softest underwear and socks you will ever own, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to <sighs> MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Back to the podcast. But, uh, episode 67, only, uh, two more episodes until lucky number 69. Am I right? What are we What are we gonna do for episode sixty nine? Uh, um, anything? L- we gotta do something special. I let's mean, do something a Howard Stern type thing. Let's Let's buy a. What do you call those things? By Howard Stern, do you mean something incredibly creepy and like just just really uncomfortable? Let's to just watch? get a bunch of young models that are looking to get their name out there okay. and have them sit on a vibrating stool. Yeah, that's a classic Howard Stern movie. <laughs> Dude, Howard Stern's creepy, I do have to say. Like, I know he's a super famous, like, radio icon, but... I think they're past all that stuff. Like, yeah. that was in the, like, early 2000s, late 90s when he was... Yeah. Or just the 90s in general, and then early 2000s when he was, like, super... Yeah. Fucking. He's always been edgy, though. He's very edgy. Like, he's, back he's... when he had that mustache and perm look or whatever that he's, was. He still has that hair, the, uh... The, like, yeah, the, you know the. I have to say, he has one of the best voices on radio, though. He's got if, a good voice, if not though. the best. Howard Stern. He's he's a classic. He's a, he's just like a classic American radio man. You he's know? got Robin. Doesn't have Artie anymore. But he he still has still he still has Hannibal. Yes. What? Hannibal. That's not his name. 
What are you talking about? Beetlejuice. Why Beetlejuice. is he Hannibal? He might. Yeah, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice Green, and they have a bunch of friends. I love Beetle. Man, if we could get Beetlejuice on this podcast, holy shit! The stuff that I I like, because I went on a Howard Stern binge recently, and the stuff that I'd find, like it was a. Uh, there was a segment called something like Battle of the Retards. <laughs> no, dude, Howard Stern. Dude, I'm serious. Like, he did some. And they got a guy with Down shit. syndrome and then Beetlejuice to go in like a head to head, like, question, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call it? I've seen that. That's where they ask Beetlejuice, like, really simple questions and he gets them all wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, I don't know. How many fingers do you have on one hand? Uh, four. Have it's you like, seen, like, have you ever watched compilations of Beetlejuice? Um, He's he's insane. He made a sex tape too. I don't want to see the sex tape. Are you sure you don't want to see the yeah, sex I'm tape? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. Well, if you ever do, change your mind. Let me know because I've seen it. There's gotta be something illegal about that. Can you? Can, can you that. make porn with a mentally? He's unhinged... not mentally challenged. Matt Beetlejuice. Matt. No, he's not. He's he's got some deformities, but he, I don't think he's mentally challenged. Then he's just stupid. I think he's I think he's a little slow. So he's challenged mentally. So he's mentally challenged. You know what? That's why he was in Battle of the Retards. I'm not saying, I'm not, that's not my coin term. That's whatever I, I think. That's what Howard that's what Stern it, said. I think that's what it's called. Why, watch it be like some very respectful name. and <laughs> Battle of the Gifted Beings. <laughs> and you called it. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of the Gifted Beings. Uh, well, speaking of, uh, of gifted beings, um, the CIA recently uh, released, or the FBI, I don't remember which one. CIA. Some, so, yeah, the CIA released some files on Osama bin Laden, and basically it, it, they released a bunch of his computer files uh, for the public domain, um, and I read through a bunch of articles and a bunch of websites that went digging through the files to see what they could find, um, so I'd like to share with everybody some of the things that were on Osama bin Laden's personal computer. Okay? Oh, yeah? Okay. Are these file names? Uh, file names as well as just content that was on okay. his computer, Okay. Uh, Osama bin Laden did have a large collection of anime, first of all. He had many episodes of Naruto, Bleach, Dragon Ball, Devil May Cry. <sighs> no Full Metal Alchemist. I, I don't know. It, that might be in there. The articles didn't list that, though. No Death Note? Um, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think he did. He would, <sighs> if Osama bin Laden had Death Note, that, that's like his dream come yeah. true. But he did, uh, it did was he all, have any Miyazaki films at all? I don't think so. All, all I read was Naruto, Bleach, Dragon Ball, and Devil May Cry. S so our boys out there commanding a bunch of terrorists while running Naruto style, dude. Oh my god, I would love <laughs> to see that. But it was it was all it was all subbed in Arabic. Um, he had a large collection of Nintendo DS games. He had Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Never uh, played that one. New Super Mario Bros. Played that. This one hits me on a personal level. He had Animal Crossing Wild World. So uh, really, what are you doing, Wild World? Sorry, I'm. How is that different, Ryan? What? I'm getting a call from Burbank, California. Can I take this real quick? Yeah, put it on speaker. Hello? Yes. I'm feeling much better. Okay, great. Uh, nope, I think that's all. Thanks, you too. Guys, uh, hold up. That was my doctor. I have the lab results. Yeah? Those are the test results. Okay. okay. I just got the test okay, results. Okay, what are the test results? Drum roll, please. And, and the results are... Negative. I do not have strep throat. It's all gone. So what do you have? No, I don't know. Maybe it was the weather changing that made me sick. Oh. I thought about that after the fact. I'm like, you have you know a weak what? little immune system? I don't have a weak immune system, but sometimes when the weather changes, I just get this allergic rhinitis. Rhinitis? Rhinitis. It might be that. Anyway, back to Osama bin Laden. The man of the hour. Um, Animal Crossing Wild World, which was just the Nintendo DS adaptation of Animal Crossing. He had a lot of weird bootleg babe games. Uh, a lot of, like, anime, like, hentai games on his computer. A lot of those. Really? A lot of, like, a lot of American, like, weird bootleg kind of porn games. He had a lot of those, so I'm sure he stroked his little Osama bin Laden to it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into some of the movies Osama bin Laden had oh, on his computer. Okay. Uh, Ice Age. Um, good film. Sid, Sid, good character. I love. I just love the the thought of Osama bin Laden late at night, bundled up in a blanket, watching Ray Romano as a woolly mammoth, um, with Arabic subtitles. Uh, yeah, Tom and Jerry. He had the uh, hit movie Ants with a Z. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Not Bugs Life. Nope. He had Ants instead of Bugs Life. So I do have to judge him a bit on his taste there. I'm not saying Ants is a bad movie, but I'm saying if he had the choice to download one of the two, and he chose Ants. Was Ferris Bueller the main? Voice actor for the ant? 
Who, I, who, I, I, who played I, the main ant? I don't remember. Problem? Maybe Matthew Broderick? Possibly? I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look that up real quick, because I have to find out now, Matt. We got Wallace and Gromit. We had uh, Chicken Little. Got that movie. Classic. We got Cars. <laughs> I couldn't be farther off. Who was it? Isn't the main character's name Z or something? I don't remember. It's fucking Woody Allen. Oh, Woody Allen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got Cars. Great movie. Uh, Shaun the Sheep, and a movie called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Now, see, my theory is possibly those were for his children, some of those movies. Yeah. Or they were literally just for Osama Bin Laden, and he liked that Well, that there's stuff. there's other files that I think were more geared towards Osama himself. Let's get into those. These definitely might be for his children. He, uh, he had over 200 YouTube videos downloaded. Um, One of which being Charlie Bit My Finger. Yep, Charlie Bit My Finger. Uh, he had many super mega videos downloaded, surprisingly. Okay. Uh, he had, um... Even the... Yeah? He had Mr. Bean with Pashto subtitles. Uh, That's not a joke, right? No. Okay. Um, he had amazing animated optical illusions, and he had over 30 crochet tutorials. He had a... Uh, <laughs> like the thought of him in some fucking cave with a small <laughs> with a fire, like, look, like looking up and down, like kind of uh, <laughs> just intrigued, just with his, with his uh, brow furrowed, <laughs> just uh, like looking up and down every five seconds Rewinding to make sure it he's... a bit to make sure he's like doing it right. <laughs> Uh, but but he uh, he really uh, had a passion for crochet. He had uh, a lot of tutorials, um, how to crochet a basket, how to make butterflies. Not 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 shitting you. How to make butterflies. He also had. Um, now the CIA said they were not going to release uh, his porn files. Unfortunately. Whoa. Um, I don't know why. But could, some, it, could it possibly be that this is not porn that he downloaded from like a Pornhub type thing? That could have been illegal. That, that this pictures? was yeah. That this yeah. Was, okay. Um, Here's some files people found. They found one called ass with three S's dot gif. Okay. Uh, dick dot JPEG. Um, hmm. Booby two dot JPEG. Booby two. Uh, yeah, someone. Um, and uh, He searches I, the internet like an eight year old. Big breasts, like big boobs. Yeah. <laughs> ass. <laughs> dick. <laughs> um, I, I, so I got all of these from uh, Vice and from. Um, uh, I forgot the other website. So. Your contact at the CIA. Yeah, my contact. <laughs> and then. Uh, Versace Tamagotchi, he's a he's someone on Instagram. He he said that he found the Hidden Valley Ranch logo saved to his computer. Um, I don't know if that was a joke or if he really did. <laughs> I saw a video where he's like pulling it up. He's like, look at this. Uh, but he also pulled up like the anime with the Arabic subtitles. So I think he I think he really did uh, find it. So I, I, it's just it's just odd. But that that's just a a piece of Osama bin Laden's computer files. I think you can actually go download them or look through them yourself. If you're interested, see if you can find Cause bef- anything. Because before it was definitely known that he had porn yeah, he had in his porn. compound. Of course. And shit. But he now, a man. But now we, now we know. We know that he has dick.jpg on his computer. Yes. And oh. ass.gif. I just, with three S's. What, booby underscore two dot booby jpeg? Two. Booby two. Just booby two. Just booby so two. That, that means there could have been booby one somewhere. And they didn't find that one. Where's booby one, dude? Yeah, we got to find booby one, guys. R.I.P. booby one. And if two gets enough... Uh, it's enough attention, maybe there'll be a booby three. Mm. You know, Hollywood Hollywood loves those sequels, so mm-hmm. maybe maybe they'll make a movie about this. Make it some sort of dark comedy. Michael Bay, you're you're bound to direct it. I just love the thought of, you know, there there was a there was a moment in time where Osama bin Laden watched Charlie bit my finger, and he laughed at it. So like, he found enough pleasure in that video that he actively went and downloaded the video because he said, I want this to be a possession of mine on my computer. I want to save this. In another universe, he got on his computer and watched Charlie bit my finger. And in this opposite universe, that was enough for him to call off the attacks. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it changed his entire... Outlook. Though, He's like, you know what? I think Charlie bit my figure came after. I, the I think attacks. it did come after that. Yeah, but I forget that he lived quite a while after 2000. He did. He lived until like, ten years. He died in yeah. 2011. And, I also I, and we fucking threw him in the ocean. Just bye bye, Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that. Uh, I love respectful burial. My ass. We just dumped him in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> in his brain, the moment he died, if he dug deep enough, he knows the storyline of Naruto, man. Yeah. At least the at least. The beginnings of Naruto. He knows that storyline. He knows what Naruto Uzumaki looks like. He knows that Naruto wants to be the next Hokage. There's going to be an opening of like the next Transformers movie where there's going to be a scuba diver and he's going down and he like find and he like finds this Naruto DVD and he's like what and he goes down to pick it up and all of a sudden a hand comes up from a coral reef and it's Osama <gasps> bin Laden. It's like zombie mermaid Osama bin and Laden. The, and then they have that same shot in like pirate in the first Pirates of the Caribbean where it's Osama bin Laden and a bunch of dead terrorists like walking on the bottom of the ocean. 
towards the United States of America <laughs> for their ultimate revenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, if Hollywood made that movie, I'd I I'd see it. I'd of course I'd see it. That'd be a no brainer. See, you were, we were talking about this yesterday. If Hollywood actually produced movies that were that outlandish and that if there was crazy, a, if there was of a, course I'd see it. There, I, I'm surprised there isn't a billionaire that just does these movies. It's like, what if Mr. Bean met Borat? Ha uh-huh. ha. Yeah, exactly. And it's he like, just pays each actor like a billion dollars. That's the thing. Like they they wouldn't get good ratings, but one they would be cult classic, <laughs> and two. They would get so many sales, I think. I know. You know, like, and Hollywood's all about money in, at the end of the day. So if they want to make money, why don't they make these crossover movies? Yeah, it'd probably ruin a few careers, a few Ho- acting careers, but. Hollywood just needs to stop giving shits. They need to stop giving shits. That's you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of course. They need to throw in that old meme. You know what I thought of? I thought of the greatest movie I could ever think of last night. What? I just, I want, I want to make a, um, a romantic comedy about, I mean, I mean, you would, you would get this. A romantic comedy starring Michael Sarah and our friend Christian. <laughs> are they the uh are they the, They're the interests? Love. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I love Christian. Everyone go check out his Instagram. It's in the description. He makes he takes good pictures and he puts a lot of he puts a lot of heart into them. Okay. Um we were on the subject of Hollywood and yeah. uh, this thought came to me late last night. And I was thinking how weird it is. Okay. This big budget movie, right? Is with, you know, sometimes people like these castmates are strangers or they know of each other. They're maybe close friends. And then they're told to like do a sex scene or something. And for the movie, it works. And like the audience, when they're watching it on the screen, is right. like, ha Amy Adams is fuck is like grinding on this guy's dick. But the only difference between that becoming weird is is budget, essentially. Like if there was this really poor South Carolinian dude who wanted to make a feature length movie purely out of passion, the same passion, probably even more than who made this, you know, high budget movie. And he's like, gets his friends together. And then he casts his wife and one of his best friends in a main role. To, to fuck in a the movie? Yeah. And then his wife has to like grind on this dude's yeah, friend. Yeah, it is budget because it's all budget and popularity you deserve right. from the movie. That's weird. But when it happens in a, like a major motion blockbuster, it's like, that's not weird. Yeah. But when, if you made like a low budget film in South Carolina. Just and, for yourself. And, and, you know. and, two, and two, two people have to fuck, then it's weird. Yeah. That's so, that's so funny. Like it turns about. into like yeah. a soft core porn situation or it just becomes a weird because like you think all these friends are together and it's like, yeah, uh, so in this scene, um, babe, uh, could you could you just uh, grind your vagina on top? Don't worry, he we're gonna pat his dick down with with some sh- with, with a bunch of sheets folded over his penis. <laughs> just could you grind on it and take your boobies out? Could you could you could you suck on her nipples a little bit? I could just see like because I'm thinking that like in the I watch I watch like um I was about to say triple A movies like they're triple A games, but I was like ho- Hollywood movies and the guy goes and sucks on the woman's nipple. And like these, this is a famous actor, famous actress. I think um, Angelina Jolie and what's what's Puss in Boots? What's his name? Antonio Banderas. They had a sex scene, and like he did that. And there's been a bunch of sex scenes where like that shit happens. And that thing specifically, I'm like, that's a legitimate sexual. Act. No, that is a legit. That's true because like, like that you know, dude's they don't show legitimately else, sucking on a nipple. That right that's now. a legitimate like sex act that they show in a movie. So does that is, ma- does that classify it as like softcore porn? Is it point? also pushing the story? I think not. Yeah, that's true. Like, like they didn't need to include the suck yeah. on the nipple. <laughs> so so who like, do you think like maybe in like Angelina Jolie's uh Like are the actors improving the sucking on the nipple or did the director tell them to suck on the nipple? Because where does it become I I think the sucking on the nipple might be the line where it becomes softcore porn. Yeah. Cause then that's like a legitimate engagement of a of a sexual act in a movie. You know? Yeah. I watched a movie um this week actually that used uh Used real semen in it, in the, you, r- real old cum wads. It, it used it used it used real splooge. Those dude. are Mario enemies in the new Mario Odyssey game. The cum wads. <laughs> it's one word. So cum wads. I could see that. Dude. <laughs> the cum wads. Um, every time I eat like a cumquat, like the fruit, it feels weird to me because the name. I'm like, what? Who named it this? A Who named quat. it a cumquat? But uh, I watched a movie called Ichi the Killer. It's like a, uh, a Japanese yakuza movie. Ichi the Killer. And uh, and the the opening, uh, like the title, is like a real puddle of cum. Or that's what I've been told. At first, you described it as not a puddle of cum. It was the names, like, spelled in cum. Well, that's what I thought it was before I watched it, because someone described it as me. What it is, is it's a puddle of cum, and then the, the name is, like, uh, like raised metal that rises through the cum. Cut this out if you want, Matt. You might want to cut this out, but I'm legitimately curious. You know how people find, like, the picture of Mother Mary on toast? 
has anyone ejaculated into a napkin or onto someone? And it's been like the perfect representation <laughs> of Mother Mary. What, they try they, to sell they, it? They can't share it because it's like, I'm not going to, this is weird. Can't you see one guy and he's looking at the, he's looking at the napkin and he's like, holy shit, I can't share this with anyone, but oh my God. He saves it, lets it, lets it harden. So it becomes kind of like, you know, when you, in Harry Potter, when they took that like stamp juice or whatever it is, it's like what you use to close an envelope. A wax seal? A wax seal, Stamp yeah. Stamp juice? Stamp juice! Stamp juice? <laughs> Whatever. That's the best name I've ever heard for like a, a wax seal. Like a, like a stamp on a letter. Stamp juice. I gotta remember that one. Stamp juice. <laughs> that's great, dude. Stamp juice. Holy shit. Oh my god, But that's they good. use that shit to close it. it. It could be like that. Do you think anyone in a romantic <sighs> letters used semen to close an envelope? Like a, I don't like think a love it would, letter? Maybe it might work. I don't know. Like you caramelize that shit? <laughs> we'll, we'll, ask, we'll ask the Try Guys from BuzzFeed <laughs> to try that one out. It's enough cum for one podcast. Stamp juice. <laughs> stamp juice? Hey, hey, honey, I'm going to the store to get some more stamp juice. <laughs> I gotta mail some letters. Like, I mean, I mean, that's what that's what they <laughs> use when the uh, like um stamp juice. Oh, what, what's it called? Uh, not, 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 notaries? No, yeah, notaries. No, uh, yeah, when they when they like put the the seal on things, that's that's stamp juice. Do you ever catch your toenail on something? Yes, and it's the most painful shit, like your pinky toenail. I I, I stub my toes a lot. I don't, I wouldn't say I I catch the nails on them that much. Oh man, you know when you. Uh, I don't know if you experienced this, but sometimes if you stub your toe, like let's say you slam your pinky toe on the corner of a table, there's a good period of like two to four seconds where it doesn't hurt, but you know it's about to. It's like I, that, I'm already that mad at that point because I know it's about to yeah, suck. Yeah, it's like the pain doesn't set in immediately. It's like it takes you're a second like, to reach your brain. Damn it's like, it. ooh, and then it hits and you're like, ah! I, I've been hitting my shins on like the edge of my wooden bed frame. Ooh, ow, like very, fuck. Like, Probably at least once a week, and each time I have to like fall onto my bed and just close my eyes and just. <sighs> Sometimes there's the, the, those times you get hurt, like specifically when you fall down and hit concrete. That's when I've noticed it the worst in my life, where you just have to shut down for a second. You have to like. Con you have to contemplate the pain. Yeah, like no one, you have to like tell everyone to be quiet, and you just have to like. <sighs> All, uh, that happens a lot if you get hit in the nuts. Oh, 100 percent. Remember that time Tucker Tucker got me real good, and that's the worst I've ever been hit. And I just had to lay down for that was like 10, 15. That was minutes. that was abnormally hard to hit someone in the nuts. It yeah, was, I it's was al like, it's almost like an alien like an alien came down from Mars and observed like the Jackass movies, and then wanted to fit into human society, and then and then decided to hit you in the nuts as a joke. But he didn't know his strength was too hard since he's not human. A human. See, when, when Tucker That's hit what I me, got from that situation. Oh, that's what I got from that situation, too. When, when he hit me, that was no, like... Because, you know, there's a, there's a tasteful way... It wasn't way. a nut tap. Yeah, there's a tasteful the, way to hit your It went way over the, the tap line. You know, when there, I think that there's, like, an unspoken rule between men where when you hit your friends in the nuts, there's a, there's a degree of softness where it's, it's enough for them to be like, ooh, ah, but not enough to cause actual lasting pain. What Tucker did with, was that was, like... With the back of his hand. It was pretty much a spank, but on your nuts. Yeah, and I, I just instantly, I fell to the ground. I, I, I crashed into that beanbag, and I just, like, I, I collapsed into myself for a good 10 to 15 minutes. I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, you know, talk or anything. I was in so much pain in my stomach. You know, girls won't really understand this, but when you get hit in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the testes, it hurts your stomach really bad like the pain isn't down there it's in your like abdomen i don't know why it, it it just is and it is the most painful feeling in the world it's absolutely terrible it's it's worse than childbirth ladies i hate to say it but it is why are you looking, why are you looking at me like that <laughs> i wanted to see how far you could get through your story with just some some angry man staring at you you look very angry <laughs> i know I, I i look like a congressman that just got shamed in front of it like all of television like a congressional hearing <laughs> yeah you know, I, I think. Oh, shut up! I think women honestly Laws. need to. Uh, as a man, I think I I, I need to say that I, I think women need to stop complaining about the pain of childbirth because it really can't be that bad. It's not as bad as breaking a femur in half. Yeah. So women, come on, uh, <laughs> let's suck it up. All right, let's not be snowflakes. And uh, all heard right? some kidney stones are worse than childbirth. Oh fuck, dude! Don't even bring up kidney stones. That I, is my. That is probably right. <sighs> It's one of my biggest my, fears my, my biggest logical medical fear. 
like something that you could see actually happening to you? Yeah, like of course cancer could actually happen, but the likelihood of me getting a kidney stone over cancer is probably higher. Ooh, yeah, especially if you have unless a, it's uh, unless it's um, prostate cancer. I think like fifty percent of gentlemen get prostate cancer. Oh yeah, that's or a, some that's shit. That might that might moment. be a really stupid and fucked up uh, um, uh, quote or uh, percentage. So correct that if yeah, if I'm wrong. Not? Might not, but uh, I don't. I don't want to be wrong, and I'd also like to know what's right. So, inform us, everybody. Just enlighten us. But we're not here to teach. Kidney stones. If if I ever have a kidney stone, I want to know way in advance so I can go get one of those like ultrasounds that blasts it away. Yeah, my uh, my uncle had a kidney stone, and he got into this like I guess jacuzzi type thing. And yeah, just, it sounds pretty nice, man. It uh, it it uh, crushes up that rock and it's, it's dust inside of your penis. Guys, health advice. Uh, I think kidney stones can also come from a, a high sodium diet. So if you're eating a lot of salt and you don't want kidney stones, maybe cut back on that and drink some more water. Uh, that's what I've been told. So is it physically possible for a kidney stone to block the ure- urethra so bad that oh, it fills God. up like a water hose? This is, this and then is great bursts. podcast discussion. <laughs> Everyone's just like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Anyone with a penis? Can we can we not talk about kidney stones anymore? I'm like I'm I'm starting to like cringe real hard. It's okay, hurt, it's physically hurting me. Okay. Oh man, dude, I just I, which which definition of cringe? Like like the like the pain the physical pain where okay. you're imagining pain. You're like Ugh. okay. Like I feel like I can feel not like the R cringe cringe not not like R slash cringe no not not like the there the needs suburb. to be like two R cringes one for like that's gotta hurt or that oh no like a like a skateboarder falling on his coccyx like that's yes. a good like that type of cringe because it, it's different from the type of cringe where when you watch someone embarrass themselves in front of a college auditorium yeah have you that's ever fallen on your ass and felt the pain go up your spine. Oh yeah, I have. Oh, Sucks. Yeah. I I bruised my. Uh, I always think that I've broken like my yeah, ass. I bruised my tailbone in high school, and I remember for a good like three or four weeks it was in pain. Especially when I rode the bus to school, every bump was just absolutely painful. It sucked. <laughs> my mom, when she was a little girl in Lebanon, tried to do a magic trick to make a stool disappear out from under her, and <laughs> and the magic trick was she had to kick the school stool out from under her, some shit like that, or she was trying to make something appear that she was standing on the stool. She probably something on. She was standing on something, trying to make it disappear, like for the magic trick, and then she accidentally kicked the stool out from under her and landed on her coccyx. And now, Ow. for the rest of her life, she's like using this cushion in her car seat because it hurts to sit down. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, so is that magic trick worth it? Imagine <laughs> was that, that magic trick no. worth the rest of your life having to carry this cushion a special around? Cushion? <laughs> I, I'm imagining like a magician in a tuxedo and a top hat with a little like magic wand, and he's like, "Watch this!" <laughs> and he's standing on a stool, and his magic trick is literally just kicking the stool <laughs> out from under him, and he just falls and, and just eats the ground like his ass just pop. Dude, you know what I'm saying? You can fit one regular musician on a stool, but you can fit four gay ones. <laughs> the fuck dude it's, it's a joke i learned in high school turned around ryan um what in the fuck is wrong with you it's 2017 w- would you pay to go see a magician where his entire act is he stands on a stool and uh then he just kicks the stool out from underneath him and falls on the ground really hard and then limps off stage and that's his that's his magic trick that's his act if like it was tom cruise or hugh jackman or hugh lori i would definitely do it just because i need some famous person to be doing this if i just want to go see a guy fall i can go to youtube type in some it's not the same as real life though there's there's something so satisfying about watching someone fall and and like no one wants to really admit it but i think every human gets a bit of pleasure from watching someone else fall because it shows that they're weaker and we're on top we're stable and what is what is the what is the psychological reason that people find comedy and watching other people get hurt and fall is it schwedenfall the uh the 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 german word the germans have a word for it which is like finding pleasure in someone else's pain i think it stems i'm i mean you are deriving some sort of pleasure from the person's pain is it because i'm not feeling that pain it's like no i think it derives from the relatableness of wow that could have been me i'm glad that wasn't me could you imagine if that was like there's a lot of thoughts that you don't think yeah. about that go through your head when funny shit happens. Like, you're laughing, but then you think about why you're yeah. laughing. Yeah, I mean, I used to just, my friends and I used to just, like, sit back and watch, like, skateboard wipeout compilations where I, it was just dudes crashing on skateboards for 20 minutes, and they were very entertaining. I used to be, like, scary good at slapstick when I was younger. Just because when you're young, things don't hurt as much, I guess. So, like, I would, um... 
there's this thing I would do, and I don't know how to, how I do it. I would jump up in the air and just land on my knees. And people would be ow. like, ow, and I'm like, ha That sounds like a wonderful way, just like the shock of hitting your knees like that. To just like paralyze your spine. I'd fall back in chairs like very fast and I forcefully and shit. shit. I feel like you're more resilient when you're a kid. As you oh, get yeah. older, it's like I, I had a friend. It's like you growing become up. more stiff, and it's like, please don't move me. Yeah, absolutely. I had, I had a friend growing up, uh, and he was. You did congratulations. I actually did have one, <laughs> and he was like his 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 mo was just hurting himself, like for comedy. Um, and we would, we, he's actually where I started making videos or one of, one of the places I started making videos. Cause I would get my, I'd bring my, my, my big, my big camera over my camcorder and I'd just film him essentially just like doing stunts and hurting himself. Like, but he was fearless. He'd stand on top of a, like, um, you know, those like power boxes outside of a house with like the, the fan, that little spinny box. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. He'd stand on top of one of those, like six feet off the ground and just do a backflip. And like land on his ass and be like, oh, let me let me do it again. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. Or, or uh, he he dug like a six foot hole in his backyard and he filled it with water and it was mud. And then he would just like run with his clothes on and just like dive head first into it. And it's like, dude, it's really fun filming this. So uh, me and my friends always got together and we just kind of film him just like injure himself. Very fun. I, I don't know what he's up to these days, but but I, I do have some fond memories of that guy. Very fun. That's, I'm glad. I'm trying to think of uh, some of the craziest times he hurt himself. He actually, he should be dead by now, but he's not somehow. He, uh, there was a, a, a place where you could go swimming where you could jump off of a rope swing that was really high above the water. Like I, I would have this never in even. Charleston. Yeah, I, I never would have would have leapt from the <laughs> oh rope swing. God. Um, I just realized how I said that. Charleston. 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 Not Charleston. You said it with a Charleston accent. Charleston. Yeah. Charleston. Uh, so I love that Charleston accent. I love that Charleston accent. He, uh, what, what he did was he decided he didn't want to he didn't want to just jump off the rope swing. He wanted to climb to the top of the rope swing, to the branch it was located on, and then keep climbing higher. Um, which uh, the police said after the fact uh, was probably about 70 feet, 60 to 70 feet up in the air. Doesn't climbing up the rope put more tension on the branch? Yeah, I would imagine so. Okay, is it, okay, if you're, because I know there's tension on the branch, how does it work? If you're closer to the branch, like grabbing onto the rope, or if you're like further down, there's more tension when you're further up because there's less tension being um, diffused by the rope, maybe, or how, or do you think it's the same amount know, of man. pressure? Physicists in the comments, let us know. But uh, a lot of people to, to were asking for help. I, I, I just want some knowledge in the comments let's section. Get some knowledge. Just learn, knowledge is power. Just guys. want to learn some shit. Knowledge shared is knowledge gained. Um, I hear people like calling us out and stuff. We get wrong all the time, and I'm like, I'm not here to teach anyone. I apologize if I get s- something wrong, but. Guys, we got we got we got to talk on YouTube seven days a week. We're gonna say some wrong stuff. <laughs> I know, um, like that's just I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, but he so the police said he it was like sixty to seventy feet above the water. Um, so he decides I'm gonna do uh, a front flip, but not just any front flip, not I'm, just a double front flip off a rope. No, off the off the top of the tree. Oh, okay. Oh, he wanted to climb onto. He the climbed branch. above the rope to a, onto a the, higher got branch. It, right, got it. Uh, so instead of doing a double front flip, he decided I have time to do a triple front flip. So he makes it two and a half, and then see, I wasn't there for this. I just heard about it. He he back knows flopped. you you fall faster as you go. Like he knows that like even though you can get one front flip at the start, that doesn't mean for each like. Um, height of his him balled up, he yeah. can do a flip. What is it like? Nine point eight one meters per second squared. Is yeah, like the, ex- the ex- acceleration rate of gravity. Yeah. So he gets two and a half, and then he backflops from sixty to seventy <laughs> feet in the air. I mean, I've done shit like that. I've 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 went off of a high dive and accidentally uh landed like this. So my uh, Ooh, that's, legs, that's like, like a, my like a, my quads and my and my nuts smacked into the water, and I remember. I couldn't swim because the yeah. Just the, I that's think what that's, happened to him. That's the worst pain I've ever felt of being hit in the nuts. It was from sm- just solid water contact. Of- well, yeah, well, water can feel like concrete from a high enough uh, height, but basically he hits the water, and he said that it it the shock of it like paralyzed him for a bit, and he couldn't swim. And his brother had to jump in and pull him out, and he had to go to the emergency room because he hit the water so hard. Um, and uh, I'm not exaggerating. I saw his back. His entire back was purple. Like, his whole back was bruised. <laughs> I bet. Entire, and, and, and it was bloody, too. And he started vomiting up blood after that. And uh, that's why he had to go to the emergency room, because they were scared that he uh, had internal bleeding. 
Um, turns out he didn't, but uh, he had like a bruised back and all that stuff, was still coughing up blood. And after, uh, apparently they had to even file like a police report on it because um, the ambulance had to come. And um, they ended up shutting down that little, uh, they took the rope down after that. Oh. Which my dad said he heard them, he heard like a local radio person complaining about that because that was like a, a, a famed spot for swimming. And he, and he, and they were talking about how just <laughs> some someone, asshole ruined yeah, it. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Like being a show off douchebag. <laughs> I, I just love that. That's the funny thing is like, there's some douchebags like high ego. I, I wouldn't. He's, he's not a douchebag. Okay. He, was, he was just very impulsive. Okay. And have, he always just did. Would you like, at least describe him as a show off. I wouldn't say he's a show off. He he does this stuff by himself, like when no one's around. So he's like, just he's he's an adrenaline junkie. So he's just, do you st- are you still like on good terms with him? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I knew one kid like that in high school. He wasn't a dick. You would think he was because of all the shit he'd do. It almost seemed like he would be calling for attention, but he legitimately just liked doing this crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, that's how, that's how my like, friend was. this kid was into parkour, and so he liked yeah, doing exactly. a bunch of that stuff. He could do, like, flips and shit. Like, he wasn't, he, he wasn't by any means a, an asshole or anything. He, he was, or uh, the kid that attention. I'm talking about was well-liked around our school. Yeah, so this, uh, my friend was really, really popular. He, he was very popular with people, um, and, and that's why I liked filming it's, videos it's with an, him and watching it, him hurt himself. Part of me wanted him to be a douchebag, because then there would be, like, some sort of uh, just justice. Justice? Yeah. Like R slash justice. How's that justice if he if he's if, if he's a douchebag and then he then he's trying to show off and then backflops, that's a whole mo- that's that's a lot more of a satisfying story yeah. than listening to some poor friend of yours cough up blood. See, but but the and, thing was there was and, always <laughs> this like slight level of when when he would do something insane and get hurt, there was this slight level of everyone watching that would be like, Oh, oh <laughs> yes. But like like we all we always felt bad for him. Yeah. There's also this slight level of excitement of oh my god, and like this kind of like, is he gonna get hurt? I kind of want to see him get hurt, but not in like a mean way. Just is like, it kind of like? Did you ever go to one of those putt putt courses that had the T Rex in the volcano that would only pop up every now and then, or if you got a hole in one at some point in the course? Mm, there, yeah, but I know there, what you're talking about. There's a putt putt course like that. That's that's uh, brings back so many nostalgic memories. It's in a uh, Myrtle Beach. And land it, of the putt putt courses. It's across the street from a Red Roof Inn, or I don't know if the Red Roof Inn is still available. But if anyone has a picture of that T Rex or knows what I'm talking about, that's that's a uh, I'll, I'll reward you with a like. Ryan was conceived right behind that T Rex. I'll like it on Twitter Very nice. if, if you send me exactly which T Rex I'm talking about. He pops out of like this volcano thing or whatever and roars. Or it used to scare the shit out of me. Yeah, but um, it's like the same feeling of like watching that because it's like. You know, he might come out, and it's cool to see him, but he also might roar. And if I get to see him roar, so I feel like you as kids were like, okay, if he succeeds in this little stunt of his, that would be cool. But if he gets hurt in the process, that's entertainment. Yeah, exactly. It's like like when you watch your friends fail at something, like you feel bad, but deep down there's like also some entertainment. Like, oh. Yeah, you know? like, like you watch Jackass, and you'd be yeah. super almost disappointed if one of their – things actually worked and like no one got hurt in the process like if yeah, they just absolutely. went down the hill in a shopping cart and was like dude that was fun you'd be like oh yeah like okay. if they high five like okay that was awesome <laughs> it's not entertaining it's like it's still cool that they went down a hill in a shopping cart yeah but you, you want to see steve-o like fly out the back hit the concrete like roll seven times and, and be smash skinned into a trash to the can. point of being a skeleton by the concrete absolutely like that's what you want to <laughs> see when you watch jackass and i hope they make another jackass movie i know that the whole ryan dunn uh tragedy Put a whole damper on the Jackass crew, but I wonder if I heard that there were rumors that they were going to make a fourth one, and they recently had trademarked a bunch of like websites and names regarding mm-hmm. Jackass Four, uh, and it, they were going to film it in Australia, so it was like a down under Jackass. They should call it Jackass the On Four. On, I I get it, I get it. <laughs> so it. It did take me a second, but I made the connection. They could just Jackass Down Under. I would I would I would love to see that. They don't need to do it 3D this time. the The era of 3D movies is. I think about about done. <laughs> not, when, not, not with James Cameron around. Oh yeah, are the rest of the Avatar movies gonna be in 3D? Yeah. Why? It's just like I okay. I like I, I don't mind 3D movies, but it was definitely a huge fad for a while. I feel like it has no place in legitimate cinema. Like it has place at the 4D theaters when you're watching Shrek and Donkey make fart jokes at Universal Studios. Some movies are fun in 3D. Like I saw well, some Monsters of them just look Aliens. better. Yeah. Like like um. 
uh, animated movies. That, right. uh, they they are more vibrant with the 3D glasses because of that depth of field effect. Like I saw Toy Story 3 and it looked beautiful. Right, that was good in 3D. Like it looked beautiful, but at the same time, it's not necessary. Right, and you know you know what I what happens to me with every 3D movie? I'll, f- I'll forget uh, like 30 minutes in that I'm watching a 3D movie. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's, a th- it's 3D, I forgot. Like the only movies I can give a pass on this shit would be like... Robert Rodriguez kit like children. Spy Kids 3D like Spy, baby just because that was essentially just a universal ride yeah and it, and it, the movie's made for kids so I mean I, and that was back in the days when it wasn't real D it was the red and blue little cardboard 3D glasses yeah. and I love that shit man I think 3D should be just I guess mainly used for kids I have I think not that's seen when a, yeah. that's that's when it's the best I agree I haven't seen a 3D movie in so long I'd actually love to go see one sometime just because it's been so long just whenever I see a 3D movie that's live action it has the same effect of watching a uh like not anymore but how you used to feel when watching a blu-ray and yeah it used, and it used to and it would move at probably what 48 frames per second or like the like new hobbit odd. movie when it moved at 48 frames per second instead of 24 instead of the native 24 th- 48 is a weird frame rate yeah, you know, it's a very unusual frame rate. Well, it's because they like have to do some speed shit with it. Like they also they also have to like slow it down or speed it back up. It to doesn't match look the right. Speed. You know, yeah. I remember the first time I saw the forty eight frames per second. I was in Blockbuster, and um, they were showing they had like an HD TV, and I think this was right when Blu Ray was first coming out, and they had a Blu Ray showing, and I just remember watching it. Probably Resident Evil or something. It was something like that. like that, and I just remember being weirded out by the frame rate. It just the first time I saw a sixty frames per second thing was on television, and it was a. Uh, a Cheerios commercial, mm-hmm. and I remember I could. It looked so weird, and I couldn't figure out why the commercial looked weird. And every time it came on, I'd try to analyze and be like, "Why does it look so weird? Why does it look weird?" And maybe someone remembers this exact Cheerios commercial. It's like a guy with a box of Cheerios, and I think he's with his wife and kid or something around the on the table, and they're talking about cholesterol. Uh, but it, I just remember it was so weird, and then I realized like, "Oh, it's because it's in a double. Uh, it's in like a, a much higher frame rate. Yeah, and that's why it looks so odd. Because film's usually at twenty four, and then I'm." I don't know if TV works at 24 if it works at 30. Think 30? Okay. I'm not, I, I don't know though. I don't know if they'll follow film rules, but I know like, you know, you have your 24, 30 and like, you know, 60 f- FPS on YouTube what, is what, fine. What goes it, at 60? Comes... Like, what's, what standard is 60? Is there anything that the standard is 60 frames per second besides like 4K YouTube videos? I think that's about it. Man, I, I actually, I, I'm not a video big fan. Game? No, video games. Oh yeah, video popular. games. Yeah. Like, but that's when it. That's when sixty frames is at its best. Not, oh, video not games, in right. film, but video games. Because you get the most like uh, reactive response to what mm-hmm. you're doing because there's more frames. And also, I uh, if they started making movies in sixty frames per second, it wouldn't feel right. It would yeah. feel weird, you know. Like it just feels off. Like Peter Jackson tried. Draxon, <laughs> Peter Draxon, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson tried to do it with uh, one of the Hobbit movies. He showed it in uh, forty-eight frames per second. A lot of people hated it because he doesn't feel it takes it takes away this weird uh, kind of like cinematic feeling that movies have because you know movies have always for the longest time been in twenty-four frames per second. So when you change that, you notice it, the effects you, a lot more. And, and also, you notice like it's just a subtle difference. Like the whole thing feels different when it has more frames. Yeah, it doesn't feel. As much like a regular uh, film anymore. It feels more like a, I don't know. You need that motion blur. Yeah, yeah. You You need that cinematic motion blur. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Um, But you know know what's always bothered me? When the camera will pan for a long time and it's at 24 frames per second and it doesn't, it's kind. It doesn't look exactly smooth because it's twenty four frames per second, so you can't focus on anything. You know, like those certain pans that happen in certain movies where you can't really focus on anything because it's just a a lower frame rate pan, and, yeah. it, and it, it just confuses your eyes, and you're like, yeah, ah. yeah. That's the only thing. That's my only gripe with twenty four frames. I love twenty four frames per second personally. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful. That's well, what we're used to. Yeah. So uh, maybe when we're 60, 24 frames per second will be a thing of the past. That's like, oh, that's old school. Fuck, dude. I need to get to the arc light. Bef- Let me see if it's still showing because I want to see a certain movie and I'm afraid that it's going to be out of theaters soon. And it and, it, and it, it's not getting a wide release right now because it was just showed in uh, like uh, TIFF. Ooh, what movie? Uh, Killing of the Sacred Deer. Oh, I want to see that too. Because did you ever see, did you see The Lobster? No. It's from the same they, director. Ooh. Really good movie, The Lobster. I highly recommend it. I'd like to see The Lobster. I, I saw the trailer. I wanted to see it. I just want to see if it's... Because it was playing at the arc light, And, uh... Of course, oh, yeah. Bad Mom's Christmas is playing at the arc light. Go, go Arclight. Oh, yeah. Um, Bad Mom's Christmas. We gotta go see that. 
I'm definitely going to see probably Thor Ragnarok this weekend just cuz just cuz I just I haven't seen a a a, a no nonsense just action movie recently and I just need something where I can just go and not pay attention to it just and not just numb yourself out cuz like I cuz I've been to the movies recently and I'll and I'll pay attention too much to where it's like the movies wanting to be one of those movies where it's like hey, pay attention to me see if you can figure me out my themes are awesome yeah and then you're like this was simple and dumb and you can just go for just not worth the effort and energy explosions and yeah i just want to go for sound effects sometimes i need that yeah yeah it, I, have, I feel you man um oh okay good it's still playing it's i might have to go see it late tonight who knows Ooh, you know what i uh you know, we did this weekend. We went to a music festival. We went to Camp Flognaw. We, we saw did. some artists we really liked. We saw Tyler the Creator. I saw Brock Hampton, and yeah. I also saw uh, Mild High Club. And those are all bands I really like. I mainly just went for Tyler, and it was a great show. It was really, really fun. But we did. Out of all the things we did do at Camp Flognaw, we did make a very special promise. We did. We. Uh, See, there was a, there was a man at Camp Flogna who uh, was recognized a, us. Wearing a, he was wearing, I remember it. Mm, I, it's almost as if it were yesterday. He was wearing a, a wonderful felt hat. Almost, almost a suede hat. Suede. He was wearing a suede hat, not a felt hat. A suede <laughs> hat. I'd like to see a felt. Hat. <laughs> That'd be like the flimsiest. Like he, he was little... wearing a suede hat. He was. He he was a uh, he was a photographer. And he wanted to take a picture of us, uh, and he was wearing a suede hat, and he said he listened to our podcast. And we said, you know what? On the next podcast, we will give you a shout out. So, he, to the man in the suede hat, this one's for you. I thought it was, like, we had to remind him to put, like, the lens cap, like, take it off. Yeah, he kept like, trying he, to take he pictures took, with the lens cap on. He three full pictures with the lens cap on. And he didn't even notice? And then, and then there was that other occasion where, like, he... He went away to sneeze, but during his sneeze, oh. he was coming back, and then remember the mist kind of got on both of us? Yeah, and dude, his nose was so runny. It was yeah. all in his mustache and shit. It was on, but, the, it was but, on his hands, but... But, you know, other, other than that stuff... Yeah, great guy. Great guy. Um, the wonderful guy. I'm sure we remember him so well. Absolutely, man. The man in the suede hat. We but love But seriously, you. Uh, multiple people came up and said hi. Uh, very appreciative of the people who do and recognize us, and that's really cool yeah. to see that happen. To everyone from Flogna who came up and said hey, hey right back. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming up and, and saying hey, and thanks for the support. Because again, in my mindset, that's not a normal thing still. It's just not normal. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm just I'm laughing about the man in the suede hat. No, I'm not saying he's not normal. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm just like... <laughs> He's going to listen and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't do any of that shit. I know. <laughs> He's like, I don't even have a mustache. But Flying Out was very fun. All the shows are fun. Um, I went on a carnival ride that was way more intense than I expected. Because I, I like carnival rides. I like crazy roller coasters. But this one just, this one got me, dude. I was. You haven't been on it when you went to the state fair in South Carolina? I have. This one just felt so much more intense for some reason. It, it was. That ride's always intense. If, if you don't know, it's kind of like a. Uh... It's this, it has, I guess, four arms, and on each arm are three cars, and the arms go, the arms themselves spin and go up and down, while the cars on the arms also spin in a circular and motion. And it goes fast, it goes yeah. really fast. So, uh, I, it was fun though, had a great weekend. Um, and while we're doing shout outs, I think, I think we got a few. First of all, shout out to Justin, aka Nothing But Lag, he is, a. Uh, he is the editor of our compilations. He edits the best of compilations, and he edits the best of Super Megacast compilations. He is a really funny dude that uh, we met online um, a while back, and we've always kind of uh, just become friends with and followed. His channel's super funny. Like, His I was, channel is I was, really funny. I was catching up on it recently, and I was like, holy fuck. Um, he, he just has, like, a lot of... Uh, he lives in the middle of nowhere, and he just... He, he lives in the a, Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> he has a lot of passion uh, f for just making content that he thinks just is funny. making so. funny shit, which yeah. is something that we connect with. So, yeah, you know, you know, if you're, if you're down to just make funny shit, and, you know, we, we love you, Justin, for yeah, that. We, go, we, go check out Justin's channel. The link will be in the description. Um, but he has been the one who has been editing all of our best ofs. Uh, is, he of, is he of age yet? Mm, is he 19, I think? I want to say he's 19. Okay, good. He's a, he's a fun dude, so go check out his Twitter and his YouTube channel. He always makes us laugh. And uh, other shout out, of course, is to our channel artist Don De Ro 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 Ro. Don. I forgot how many rows are in. I think it's three. Don De Ro Ro Ro. 
Uh, but he is our channel artist. Uh, really cool guy. Go give him a follow as well. Um, he does a fantastic job with all of our thumbnails, our podcast art. So he's the mastermind behind all that, and he is definitely uh, worthy of checking out. But, um, I mean, yeah, uh, there are only, I think now, eight, something like eight, seven, eight or nine Super Mega Cast episodes left in 2017. There's a two handful. Yeah, you, you, can, you can hold them in two hands. <laughs> yeah. We'll let you or know when it gets them down on to two one hands. hand. Right, you can count them on two hands. So, uh, not that many episodes left in 2017. It's, nope. been a, it's been a wild year so far. And uh, we're really happy with where things uh, are going. We're, we're in the home stretch. We're, we're in the final stretch of 2017. Um, and I know, we, I know we have a lot of series going on. Mm. We do plan on finishing them. Okay? We do. We do plan on finishing Luigi's Mansion. Yes. Plan on finishing that good old Simpsons haha game. Uh huh. <laughs> and we also, also are really wanting to finish Cuphead. Yes. Which will happen soon. There's not that many episodes of Cuphead left, honestly. I mean, Same we're, with Simpsons. I think there's like three episodes of The Simpsons left. Yeah. Something we'll, like that. We'll, we'll get through this stuff that you guys want to see. Also, uh, in the comments section, uh, what series that is currently going on right now is your favorite and would you like to cons uh, see more focus on? Yeah. And what series would you like to see focus on in the future? Something, a game that we haven't played yet. Yeah, and again, uh, we just, we do apologize if there was a series that we started and we didn't finish and you really liked it. We do apologize. Um, you know, our channel, we do start a lot of series and sometimes uh, after playing for a while, we either realize we're not having the most fun playing it or uh, the editing of a certain series is a little too uh, just boring or not fun or maybe Force people aren't enjoying it that much. Forcing us to play a game that we don't want to leads to bad commentary and also leads to probably just lackluster, like just... Just the editing's not going to be on point if, like, everything else isn't coming together. Yeah, we, and we, so, we really like playing games that, that we really have fun playing. So that's why sometimes we'll start a series and do a couple episodes and never pick it back up. Because it's yeah. like, well, we had fun playing those beginning episodes, but maybe we tried again and we just didn't have that much fun with it. But yeah, uh, also thank you for all the support of uh, Spooky Mega. Uh, now it is November. We do have a Black Friday merch sale coming soon with some... Uh, some new merch you haven't seen, and maybe some merch that's gonna that that, that uh, was up before that that is no longer up mm. that that will be up. That maybe you, you might see a return of some some shirts you've been demanding and who maybe knows? some hoodies. I don't uh, know. It could be some cool towards the end of the year. We'll see. Know. But guys, thank you for tuning in. Next week we'll be back with episode sixty eight of our podcast, our critically acclaimed podcast. So thanks for listening, uh, Ryan. Would you like to say anything else? Um. I just wanted to really quick talk about the unfortunate grass shortage in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, without grass, um, fathers in sub-Saharan Africa do not have lawns to mow and therefore cannot earn respect from their families. <laughs> and that that it is a, a harrowing experience if you have seen it from yourself, like like me who is a, a, a photographic journalist. But if you could do, do anything to help out that situation, uh, that would be the best. Uh, Thank you, good night. God bless America.